all right uh, one of the most you know problematic areas you know so whosoever is behind can come in the front row there are some seats in the front uh, there has always been this problem you know that MEP design, how do you go about designing MEP, that is HVAC, electrical, plumbing, firefighting and all of that. Uh, and everything goes above the false ceiling. So our own, and as doctors, as I am a doctor or an owner of a hospital, probably does not have much understanding of, you know, those systems. So the next speaker is going to, you know, talk about how to plan an efficient MEP system, you know, which is energy efficient in hospitals. And um, uh, his name is Mr. Ajay Joshi, Associate Director, Building Engineering from AECOM India, Private Limited. AECOM is one of the world's largest, you know, design companies. He is a seasoned professional with overall 21 years of experience in MEP design engineering, design management, HVAC systems as a specialization. Uh, mind you, HVAC is, you know, the bulk of electricity consumption in, in hospitals. Uh, Currently, he is with AECOM India as Associate Director. He is a member of Ishre Mumbai, gives guest lectures at Ishre platforms. Uh, he has been associated with various hospitals, including Vokhart, uh, Hiranandani, Godrej, Tata Memorial, Pragati Hospital, Kohinoor, which was the first platinum rated you know, hospital. He has many articles which are published in Ishre and other Bill Tech magazines. And previous to his current job, he was working with Tata Consulting Engineers and Kirloska Pneumatic Company Limited. So please welcome Mr. Ajay Joshi from AECOM. Good afternoon. I'm Ajay Joshi from AECOM. Uh, I will be talking today on CMEP designs in hospital. So before going into the detail, what my the whole intention is to speak about these four circles. Uh, one is energy consumption hospital productivity, patient satisfaction, and operating costs. So when all these four things come together, we have a, a prolific operation of hospitals. A typical HVAC or, you know, for hospital, if you consider 100% as this power consumption, I will, I will need to move there. Uh, if you see uh, energy consumption of a particular hospital, a typical hospital, half of it is basically for air conditioning, roughly. Out of which you will see for fans. Out of the half, which is for air conditioning, almost 18 to 20 percent is for the fans, which is not a case for any other building. As Sir said, you know earlier, uh, in the uh, say IT buildings or a data center, this particular portion would be less. Why? I will come later. So just see here, the fine consumption and a fresher consumption are the most big consumptions in a hospital. So when we say the energy efficient operation, these are the four major attributes for which we should aim at. One is the fresher, fine energy, obviously air conditioning, a chiller energy and lighting. With optimization of all these four, it is possible to achieve good energy savings to the tune of 30 to 40 percent. Yeah, this is just an informative slide. Uh, in hospital, there is a standard, you know, I mean, ASHRAE 170, which is required to be maintained to design the fresh air systems. Yeah. Now, here is a key challenge. Uh, for energy efficiency in a hospital as compared to any other building, let's say IT building or a data center, there are a few, cha you know, few big challenges. If you talk about HVAC, the first and the foremost challenge is in terms of uh, filtration levels. IT building doesn't require a microwave filter, nor it requires a HEPA filter, but hospital requires it. The next is higher air changes. Say, for example, operation theaters may require to the tune of 20 to 25 air changes per hour. So which is very high. This is associated with again a humidity control and a humidity control at a partial load is always a challenge. So that is third challenge. The fourth challenge is in design is basically the less predictable occupancy and equipment loading schedule. Like say for example in an IT office you can always make a guess that from 9 to 10 say 10% 10 people then 10 to 11 some 30% people 
and then you can design the systems. But in case of That's clear? Okay. Um, then the fifth one is necessity of return reducting. Now, return reducting is actually mandatory as per new standard SRA 170 for almost 90% of beggars in hospital. Uh, what they say is whenever there is a pressure relationship you know, which is to be maintained, a return reducting is mandatory, which is not the case in any other IT building or office building. So, what this does is this puts additional pressure on the fan in terms of high pressure drops. So, this is one more challenge and peak demand saving this is also one more challenge so we'll see how to address these challenges you know one by one in electrical services the main this thing is harmonics and for architects it is basically envelope and utilization of daylight now let us see how to address these challenges in a most prolific and efficient manner now when we talk about uh, filtration levels um, Almost all areas in the hospital, except few non-medical areas, they require either MA of the 13 or 13 plus HEPA. So 13 is 13 and 14 is basically a microwave filter, and HEPA is MA of 17. So almost all areas require higher filtration level than a conventional building. So this puts additional pressure on the AHUs in terms of static pressures and energy consumptions. Next is humidity control. Now, as we all know, in a hospital, we need to keep a very tight band on humidity, which is not a real requirement in a mall or a or in a say hotel. Now, for maintaining humidity, what is generally done is a deeper row cooling coil, and then we think and we say that the humidity control is done. This is not a case. What happens with the deeper row coil is a deeper rock oil usually responds to return air temperature, that is a sensible load. When there is a partial load condition, the chill, you know, the chill water wall you know, basically full bypasses the water and you have a high humidity conditions. So deeper row, 8 row, 10 row deep coil does not solve the problem of humidity. Then what we used to do unconventionally is to give reheat. You cool it and then you reheat again to achieve the desired RH. That used to give us RH. But then that's now, see that's no more actually uh, permitted as per Russian 90.1. So we will be now actually discussing DOAS, which is a new system which is for RH control. Which Anubhav will speak. So what we are seeing here is the dedicated outdoor air system. So which is what the sir was telling that the decoupling of the sensible return load. So first we need to understand what are the type of loads are there in the hospital. So we, which, uh, so we are having a sensible load which is actually the external facade or skin load which is coming through the solar. Latent load is because of the occupancy and because of the outside air. So what we are having a system here that we need to divide this load. Right now whatever the system we are having for the hospital we are having a, only a single system for catering this type of load. But if we can divide this load, we can have two different systems for catering this load. What is the main agenda is? The main agenda is to have the better energy savings. So the whole idea is if we are having the separate system for the sensible loads, we can raise the chill water temperatures, which again gives a better energy saving for the chillers. Just write it here. This a preliminary sketch. See, any air conditioning will have all these four components. In our earlier systems, we used to handle this with a one system, one AHU, one fan call unit, or a light. Now here what we do is, we divide and conquer. The room sensible load is handled by the AHU as it was been handled in older systems. It could be FCU, it could be chilled beam, it could be anything else. The three portions, you know, which is room latent load, so basically a moisture load is handled by a unit known as DOAS dedicated out air system. What it simply does is, it gives a fresher at a required dry conditions. This comes as a fresher, goes to your regular HU or FCU. This FCU or HU now has to take care of only sensible load, that is only temperature. So humidity is no more botheration of your HUs. That has been taken care by DOAS. So while sizing DOAS, we size it so that the 
you know, dryness of this air is sufficient to take care of the whole latent load. Now see what happens. Now these are two independent systems, so we call it as a linear control. This particular piece of equipment has to control only temperature and humidity is being taken care of by the, you know, this unit independently and linearly. And as Anbu said, what this gives opportunity, now since this is handling only sensible load, I no more require to give a cooler chill water. Conventionally, I give 6 degrees, 7 degrees centigrade water. Now for sensible load, you don't require that cool water. So you are actually, actually I can afford to give higher chill water temperature, thereby saving energy. The general practice right now, the sir is telling that the coil, the coil which is there even the DOS, is still we are not using the elevated chill water temperature. This DOS is very much common in use, but we are not having the elevated chill water temperature. We are just using the conventional chill water temperatures. So, sensible load will be taken care by this coil, and this latent load will be taken care by the passive humidification wheel. Once the latent load is taken care by that wheel, why we are not raising the chill water temperatures? Yeah. One more thing over here. Uh, for humidity control, nowhere you are utilizing any heating. The main heating element in this heating element in this is this wheel. This wheel gets regenerated due to return air. No external heating is required. So, what you are trying to do here is trying to take care of your humidity with no heating whatsoever. Now, what are the other possible value addition that can be brought under the DOS? This type of DS is already seen in many of the hospitals, but what are the further things, new things we can do it in the DOS? We can have the heat recovery, heat recovery is also very common, but we are not having any condensate recovery. On an average, one ton of air conditioning can give you 8 to 10 liters of water, and this water is actually 18 to 20 degrees centigrade only. And nowadays, we are just wasting this water directly to the STP. Why not we are using this water? Why not we can use this water to improve the air conditioning efficiency? As a hospital, we are going to have a lot of occupancy, a lot of latent load, a lot of pressure. So just imagine the kind of condensate which can be generated in a hospital. So we can reuse that condensate, in increase the chill water temperature, then direct or indirect or pre-cooling. Pre-cooling means the whatever the outside air which is coming into the DUS, we can first pre-cool that air even with the evaporative cooling. And we can do this in this type of Mumbai type of climate also. Even the humid climate also, we can do this indirect evaporative cooling. And this cooling is actually taken care by with the help of condensate. So we are at one stage, we are mixing the water to the air. At one at the coil stage, we are taking the water again from the air. So just the just to simplify this, the condensate you know which comes from the DOS, this could be thrown out. This could be reused in the say STP. But if you use it for the indirect air pressure cooling, as Anbu was saying, this is outside air which is at higher temperature. The condensate, you know, which is coming will be at low temperature, say 20, 22 degrees centigrade. So with this using, you can actually use water itself and its energy itself. So what will happen is the pressure will be pre-cooled and which will actually say reduce the load downside the system. The other benefit of this is the climate change. The people are talking about the climate change. The ambient temperature is rising. So whenever this ambient temperature is rising, the climate will become much more drier. The temperature is rising. At that point, this condensate can take care of this climate change or whatever things are there. So there will be no additional load on the cooling coil. So there won't be any load on the cooling coil that much additional load. Okay. Now for uh, this was about the humidity. The next one basically we talked about higher filtration levels. Higher filtration levels calls for greater use of energy. So can something be done to reduce that? What can be done? See, this is an example of an operation theater. Now, operation theater, as all as we all know, it requires a pre-filter, a micro-filter, and a HEPA filter at the terminal. Here. Now, by selecting a fan, obviously one would select. Okay. Now these filters, their you know loading is dynamic in nature. When the filter is clean, they offer a least resistance as they starts getting choked up, they give more resistance. But obviously as a designer, you will size the fan for the clock condition or at say at least average condition. So imagine what will happen when the filters are clean. When the filters are clean, this fan will deliver much more air than it was supposed to, which is basically a wastage of energy. So what is one philosophy is, one thing for sure, for operation theater, you want to maintain a constant air delivery, irrespective of everything in the world. 
irrespective of the load, irrespective of uh, you know filter loading, so the air delivery to the operation data should be constant. So, air flow measuring station can be installed on the supplier ducting. Let's say this operation that is say designed for 6,000 cfm. Then to modulate 6,000 cfm, AFMS will give signal to the VFD to maintain that uh, to maintain that 6,000 cfm. Now, when it, uh, when this filter is initially clean, the fan will try to give 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. That will be seen over there. The speed will be tuned down, and the constant air delivery will be maintained. As this filter goes on choking the speed would go on say, automatically increasing. So filter pressure drops and, and filter loading you can take here by a nice kind of a, a system integration. Yeah. Fan power. Now we also spoke about you know, higher air changes. So what could be done? We always speak for VFDs on fans, then aerofoil shaped fans. But there are a few new approaches which could be seen and evaluated. So what we had seen earlier is the fan power consumption for the OT areas. As we have seen in the morning that how the server was explaining the, how the hospital should be designed, different type of area need to be taken care of. So why not we have a separate systems or uh, separate methodology for different, different areas. So that on the earlier side we had seen the how we can save the fan energy in the OT areas. Now we talk about how we can, whether we can save fan energy in the general areas, office areas or corridors. These are the latest technology which is available. The radiant cooling, chilled beam. So normally, in the general, uh, whatever practice we are having, even in this conference room right now, we are having a air conditioning or we are providing to, we are trying to provide air conditioning by use of convective heat transfer. By using the convection. Why not we are taking benefit of radiation? Radiation is actually the four times faster heat transfer as compared to other modes of heat transfer. But we are not taking any benefit. So why not start thinking about the radiation heat transfer? Because in the hospital, if you see the sensible loads, is the external skin load, occupancy, sensible, occupancy load, and sometimes the equipment itself gives you the sensible load. So what we are trying to say here is that general wards, corridors, office areas, we can straight away go for radiant cooling. What is the main objective for this radiant cooling is, one is the, we can raise the chill water temperature up to 15 degrees centigrade. So that means straight away 30 to 35 percent of the chill energy will get saved. And the other benefit is fan power. So we can see the fan power, 50 percent or 60 percent fan power consumption will going to be reduced. Because in the radiant cooling there is no need of fan power, there is no need of the fan air movement or something. Because heat transfer is taking place just with the help of radiation. This image is just like trying to show that in a zone, each and every object will exchange the heat with the occupant with the help of radiation. So why not increase the temperature? Why not have some system which can directly provide the comfort to the occupants with the help of radiation? Okay, uh, just go back to the slide. See, in a say radiant you know, system, uh, the main concept is, let's say this is the surface. Uh, I'm sitting, I'm, I'm standing over here. If temperature of the surface is less than my body temperature, I am going to reject the heat to that body. If vice versa, I am going to get the heat from that body. So this system is you cool the you know, big surfaces in which you know you are standing or sitting. You will try to say render the heat by radiation. As Anbo said, it is three to four times faster than a regular air conditioned way. So you feel comfortable. So as we said earlier, since the hospitals also different different areas are that's like that, the same way the heat is also also performing. The heat is having sensible and the latent components. The latent components, as we explained earlier, the DOS or dedicated system for the treating the latent load can take care. And for treating the sensible load, just the sensible, the temperature load can be taken care by the radiation heat transfer. Now this radiation heat transfer is means that we need to have this small 17 or 20 mm PEX pipes are there. This is the section of showing the how this system is going to be work. So we are having 70 to 20 mm PEX pipe which is embedded in the either in the ceiling, or either in the slab or it can place in the, in the uh, screed. So right now this in this section is showing that these pipes are placed directly in the screed. So the benefit of this system is that this 
fact pipe is carrying the chill water which is actually not the 7 or 12 degree which is the normal degree this is actually can, can carry the water up to 18 to 20 degree centigrade also so you can imagine uh, duty which is done by the ahu with a large fan large ducting 7 degree centigrade chill water temperature is done by no ducting chill water at 20 degree centigrade and you will get the same comfort and same condition the cost, um, the cost is almost same because if you see this HU you are compromising the space of the HU rooms you don't need that HU rooms and the cost is also high, uh, 5 to 10 percent in the range of the normal chill water system it's not like very costly HU, you need a smaller ducting uh, so 5 to 10 percent incremental over regular system but as we go you know ahead this may also come down yeah. and we see that uh, normally in the hospital 20 to 30 percent area will go to be the general office area general ward area at least 30 percent going to be the general ward area and this system can straight away benefit for those areas 30 to 40 yeah, you're saying something? Yeah, yeah yeah this could be in a spirit this could be in a floor this could be in a false ceiling this could be in a ceiling this could be a wall yeah, no, see, for example, if we give example of this room, we can have this radiant ceiling or floor. It can be placed on the floor because we are just more close to the floor. And if the, because the roof is too high, we can, uh, we can even have the roof. But for speaking on the wall and all the time, 50% less radiation heat transfer because the view factor will be less. So whatever the horizontal surfaces are, we can always think of this, putting these pipes on the horizontal surfaces. 75 mm. Uh, 50 mm. Actually, uh, 17 mm is the pipe, and over that insulation of uh, th at least 50 mm, so approximately 60 to 65 mm more increased in the. Uh, this could be done in a screening as well. The distance between the pipes is 150 mm. Which? Six inches. Plastic pipes. Pex pipes, yeah. Pex pipes. There's no chances of leakage and all those things. And some people feel that condensation can be issue with this type of type of climate. But we can have these controls here. So whenever this outside air directly touching into the surfaces, the, whenever the, it reaches the dew point temperature, we can switch off the system. So there is no actually problem of the humidity uh, condensation problem going to be there or leakage problem. There's no problem going to be there. Yeah. Uh, next big challenge is hot water or heating. Now, as you know, the hot water is required in labs, then in inpatient departments and humidity control. So conventional approach was to use a boiler or a gas hot water generator. Of late, we also used desuperator. Now, desuperator was used by so, so maybe some eight, ten years back. The main issue about desuperator was the hot water temperature is a function of outdoor air temperature. What happens is you want maximum hot water in month of say January uh, in the morning when the ambient is low. As can be seen from this, uh, when the ambient is low, you will get lower temperature of um, hot water. So then what we need to do is we need to say increase the temperature by electrical heating. So these super heaters, uh, you know, didn't help much. So new approaches, uh, as in the last listing also we talked about is solar hot water and heat pump and hybrid solar. So just one interesting equation over here. Uh, with heat pumps, if you put X amount of electrical input, you will get 3X as output. For example, if you invest in heat pump as 10 300. kilowatt of electrical input, you will get 30 kilowatt of heating. So we have seen that, uh, especially the cities like Mumbai, if there are some uh, most of the time the people are having the facing the space problem. They don't have enough space to provide the solar panels. So in that case they can even go with the hybrid system which is called hybrid solar heat pumps which is the combination of heat pumps and the solar hot water. So this can also be think of. So heat pump is as I said the heat pump is basically the we are using the just the waste heat. It's not like anything other. We are using the waste heat which is coming from the chiller. So right now we are just rejecting that heat in the cooling tower and it goes to the air. But we can reuse that heat, recapture that heat to generate the hot water for us. Okay, conventional approach as we all along speak about 7 degree centigrade, chillers with VFD, 
ice thermal storage. Ice thermal, this ice thermal storage is basically for chopping of the peak load as we you know, spoke in the first slide. There are better ways to do that now. Elevated chill load temperature as we saw with DOS with radiant cooling system. And instead of ice thermal storage, now there are you know, system available, stratified chill water storage tanks. So the, uh, as we said, the hospital is a 24 operation building. So during the night time, there are some places, especially the cities like Mumbai, Thane and all those areas, we have the dual tariff is there. In some places, dual tariff is there, but that means that during the night time, the electricity bill will be, rates will be cheaper as compared to during the day time. The whole idea of this exercise is to peak this, to shave the peak demand. So suppose our peak demand in the hospital is 1000 kilowatt, our main agenda is to shave that peak demand to at least 800 kilowatt. So what are the ways to do that? So elevated chill water temperature is one of the methods to decrease the chill consumption, but this thermal storage, thermal storage is actually very popular for where the dual tariff is there, but the mostly the thermal storage are using with a brine chiller, special chillers are there which is actually just generating the chill water during the night time. So instead of having the separate dedicated chiller which is called the ice thermal storage, the new technology is stratified chill water storage where we can just have a tank, a structural steel tank can be placed uh, in which we are playing with the mixing of the two, we are playing with the property of the hot water that hot water, uh, play, playing with the property of the water that hot water and cold water doesn't get mixed easily. So at the bottom the cold water is coming, the top side the hot water is co coming from the building and the bottom the chill water is coming from the chiller. So during the night time this tank will get filled and during the daytime peak time the water from this tank will come to the building. So by doing this if you are have need is five chillers, so at least one chiller capacity, one chiller cost you can save by using this tank. And during the peak time, you just need a pump and you can take the water from this tank. Yeah. Two advantages. This tank can be filled in night when there is a less tariff, when there is a less load, less ambient. Next day, you can use the chill water. So as Ambo says, you can actually eliminate one or two chillers. Next day, this itself is a chiller for you. Coming to electrical side, you know, harmonics. Now, harmonics is something which affects the energy efficiency. Not only that, it actually causes equipment failure, malfunctions, overheatings, insulation failures, additional energy costs, penalties also. In Maharashtra, uh, at certain places, if you have large harmonics, you have big penalties. So, to mitigate. Uh, to mitigate. Uh, next, next. To mitigate, you have you know three four options. One is detuned reactors, which you should keep in non-linear loads like VFD, UPS, IGBTs, K-rated transformers for your important equipment like operation theater. As far as possible, the power supply to them should not be direct. It should be through K-rated isolation transformer and active harmonic filters. If you are operating with a large number of VFDs, uh, IGBTs, then VVVF drives, then active harmonic you know. You know these all filters also may be required at a system. Now, this is a you know, very interesting slide for you know, design engineers. Now, let's say you are doing um, initial calculation to estimate a capacity of a particular area. The heat generation is basically heat input for an air conditioning engineer. So, usual way is to take connected load as heat dissipation and get away. It will be interesting to know connected load is never equal to heat dissipation. You can see as an example MRI. Now MR connected load can be you know, 100 kilowatt, 200 kilowatt. But heat generation is to the tune of only 20 kilowatt as can be seen from here. So it is very important not to overset the system. So there are few guidelines available in ASHRAE for taking the equipment load as an input. If those can be used then we can actually avoid oversizing of the systems. So here we are talk, trying to talk about the, that one of the most critical challenge which is facing by the designer that when the designer is actually the designing the HVAC system for a project, he doesn't know about this, what are the electrical equipments coming for the labs. He doesn't have that much knowledge about this, all the stuff labs and what are the connected load. Even if the connected load sheet which is actually shared by the medical professionals, they try to take the same load as a heat input. So suppose for example the heat uh, the electrical connected load for the laptop is 100 watt. Doesn't mean that 100 watt is converted into the heat. 
pakai two three times. So we have we have seen the first slide that energy consumption is important. We are talking that everything about the energy consumption, energy saving, but for a hospital, the major objective outcome of the major objective of the hospital is the patient satisfaction. People satisfaction need to be there. Comfort should not be compromised. It should not happen that we are saving the energy, but the comfort of the people is getting a uh, compromised. So, what are the things we can do to have the better people satisfaction? So, we are having a pressure control system. We are having different type of pressures in the different zones to control the or to eliminate the nosocomial spread disease which is a coming infection hospital infected disease are there which we can prevent by having the different type of pressure and different type of zones better indoor quality as I said ki, filtration level is very important in the hospital but this filtration level can take care of the only the outside air pollutant what about the inside air pollutants interior finishes is also important so that means we need what while selecting the interior finishes the indoor quality need to be important, VOCs and the paints and all those also need to be taken care because it's a research shows that the patient recovery will faster when we have the better indoor air, indoor, uh, air quality. Connectivity the outside environment, so you can see in the image that the patient bed is having a complete view for the outside. So in this case the patient can will feel the recovery will faster, the more daylight need to be there. So, if those areas, certain area where the direct windows access are not there, then the architect can think of the skylight which can give the good amount of daylight inside the zone. So, because of this, no sick building syndrome will going to be there if the pressure is there in the building, regular CO2 monitoring. So, based on the CO2 levels of the building, we can monitor the pressure, we can modulate the pressure, better acoustic need to be there. Lighting design. Lighting design is another very interesting topic in case of the hospital. So, the hospital should be designed in such a way that the maximum daylight should be there. Because uh, research papers and research case studies show that the people will feel much more comfortable and much more energy, uh, won't feel dull and all those things if they are having more exposed to the daylighting. So, on the right side we can see the different type of fixtures which uh, having the color temperature, there is a color temperature is also there. We are always talking about the lux level in the lighting, but the color temperature is also important. The color of the light is also important. The color of the light which is recommended is generally the white is 3000 to 6000 Kelvin the light is going to be there. So, whenever we have this lower temperature which is the incandescent bulbs are all this, all these incandescent bulbs are having the lower less than 2000 Kelvin temperature. But this as we, as we go upside we can have this for the day lighting we can have this 6500 Kelvin. Whether is there any relation between the lux level and the Kelvin color temperature also? Yes, there is a relation is there. So, what we are trying to see in this, uh, what we are trying to show in this chart that whenever we have this high Kelvin temperature, high temperature fixtures but and low lux level then the things will appear bluish, dull. And in the other way if the lux level is less and the temperature is higher, color temperature is higher, then the things will appear reddish and so artificial. There is a graph between alert temperature positive illumination level. If you are on this side of the curve, you will appear as a reddish to your eyes. If you are on this side, it will be a bit bluish. Both of these are not very comfortable. A comfortable range is in between these two, you know, which is slightly whitish. White. So, 3000 to 5000 Kelvin is the recommended range of the color temperature and the lux is 200 to 300 lux. Another important term for the lighting is performance spec, which we said is spec, performance, efficiency and comfort. So, performance, yes, the optimum lighting level need to be there to avoid these mistakes and less fatigue, but efficiency need to be also taken care of, whether need to, we to see that maximum efficiency needs to be there. Also, at the same time, the color temperature, the type of fixtures, glare analysis, all those things need to be taken care so that we can say that the lighting design is also is fulfilling all the criteria performance efficiency and comfort effects of lighting in the doctors they can work in the reduced stress atmosphere uh, environment for the patient they can brighten up their mood they can heal up the faster healing rate will be faster so this is the different uh, illumination levels given for the hospital areas so 
So as sir, uh, we have shown in the earlier slide, if we are having the better building energy saving, if we are having the better thermal comfort and visual comfort, your building or a healthcare facility is always going to be green. Uh, it can easily go for the platinum or any rating system. So this is end of our presentation. Any questions? Reference sites in India, hospital reference sites in India, right. which we have done many, sir. Many right. we have done in Mumbai, as sir said, uh, Sairanjan Hospital, Pavai. Then we did Bokhara Hospital at Bangalore. Many we did, sir. The order of sector, yeah, yeah. sector is merged into ACOM. ACOM. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for a very useful uh, presentation. Uh, taking you back to the I'm, uh, I'm Colonel Harish Kumar. I'm from the Apollo Hospitals here at Navi Mumbai. Uh, now, when you talked about the direct outside air, uh, which you want to utilize, yeah. you know, which you call the door system, uh, which you are going to utilize to reduce the consumption of energy for air conditioning. Now, the basic essence of that was supply of dry air. Am I correct? Right. From outside. Very right. Then you also said that this is very applicable to the Mumbai climate, wherein we have a very, very high relative humidity. Right. Now, how do you balance the two? Because the very fact that you're going to take the outside air and you're going to do is, is to go with a regular 8, 10 degrees, 6, 7 degrees centigrade chill water temperature to cool it and do it. But with this system, you can do it with 10 degrees centigrade also. So that's the beauty of this system. Even 11 degrees centigrade also. So with 11 degrees centigrade and passive dehumidification wheels. So basically dehumidify using no external source, use retainer itself to regenerate the wheels. So basically it's a dehumidifier. It's a dehumidifier with no electrical source, no heating source. It can be, however, the only thing would be the static pressure of the fan needs to be you know seen accordingly. Because at the end of the day, this is the wheel. Absolutely. Any other question? All right. Uh, I would you know, request all of you to be seated because after this is the award ceremony for the most energy efficient hospital. Let me call upon Mr. Anand Padmanabhan to felicitate both the youngsters. I think excellent talk. There are many things that we didn't know. Thank you so much, Ajay and Anubhav. Really good.